everyone, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you. Amen. So we went on, first 
the Germans singing one of their carols, and then we'd sing another of ours. Then we started up, O come all ye faithful, and the Germans immediately joined in singing the same thing to the Latin words, Adeste Fideles. And I thought, well, this is really a most extraordinary thing. Two nations, both singing the same carol in the middle of a war. On Christmas morning, in some areas, soldiers emerged from their trenches and met in the area between them, no man's land, to share cigarettes, tell jokes, pose for photographs, and bury the dead on both sides. The Christmas truce of 1914, short-lived as it was, brought a tiny bit of peace and light and humanity into the middle of those blood-soaked battlefields. And it all started with a simple carol. I misspoke earlier when I said this was a tale of three Christmas Eves. It's actually a tale of four. I hope you'll forgive me. The first Christmas Eve happened long before the other two, centuries before. It's the one Luke describes in the second chapter of his Gospel, which we heard a few minutes ago. You know the story. Augustus, the Roman emperor, called for a grand registration, a census. Joseph, that gentle and devoted son of David, makes the journey to his hometown of Bethlehem, and he's not alone. He's brought along his young and very pregnant fiance, Mary, who's due to give birth imminently. And of course, there's no room at the inn, no guest houses where they can stay. But we can imagine there were plenty of raised eyebrows and whispers as this man of high reputation searched high and low for a room and a bed for his betrothed in her hour of great need. And we know what happened. No room but they did the best they could. And the newborn savior and redeemer of the world was wrapped in strips of cloth and laid in a trough where cows and horses fed. The fourth Christmas Eve. Well, I can't tell you much about the fourth Christmas Eve because you, are writing that story right now. I can tell you that it's over 2,000 years since the first Christmas Eve, and we're not in Bethlehem or Europe. There's been no flood, and this is certainly not a battlefield. And although I may not know all the circumstances of your life, or the kind of year you've had, your joys, and your sorrows, or exactly what brought you into this sanctuary tonight, here's what I do know. You're here. You're here to sing the songs and hear the story, because even though you've sung these songs and heard this story before, you know, deep in your soul, that you need the gift of Christmas Eve. You need the good news. Our whole world needs this good news. We are fractured and broken, like the organ in that little Austrian church in 1818. We are divided and turned against each other, like those soldiers in the trenches in 1914. We are all searching for a place to find comfort and lay our heads, 
like Mary and Joseph on that holy night. And we are all ready to birth something new together, to seek and find a better way of living, honoring each other's dignity, nurturing and cultivating grace and mercy and hope and love in the midst of this world of despair. Here's a little secret, one you probably already know if you stop to think about it. Our God has a way of bringing glory from chaos, peace from division, beauty and joy and newness from that which is broken or bloodied or humble and lowly. Our God shines light into the darkness and sends hope into our longest night. May the Christ child, the one who saves and restores and redeems us all, be born anew in you.